In the summer of 1991, Michael Cork seemed to have everything. Happily married, he had a job he loved, teaching music at a Chicago high school. But just after his 40th birthday, he began to have problems sleeping. I knew he couldn't sleep. My God, I slept with him. I laid with him every night. And he would toss and turn or just lay there. He would wake me up in the middle of the night and yell at me and tell me I was snoring and to turn over. One night he yelled at me and he said, we just couldn't sleep together anymore. So I said, fine, I'll go sleep in the living room, which I did. And I slept in the living room for 10 nights. And his sleep wasn't any better. I got him a special type of sleeping pillow. It didn't help. Cork couldn't find a way to get to sleep. By the time he conducted this school concert, he hadn't slept for over two months. It took so long for him to walk and get up on the podium. I didn't want to help him walk. He needed the dignity, no matter how difficult for him. He wanted to sleep so bad that, uh, you know, you'd sit there and he says, I've got to sleep, so, okay. And he'd lay down, but, you know, Within five minutes, he'd be right back up again. He was losing physical vit vitality. There came the time I would have to shower him and dress him for school. And what it did to his independence and his ego was difficult for us both to handle. Like Peter Tripp, Cork began to hallucinate. He was losing touch with reality. It was like his mind had regressed to the past. And, and things came to a head at Christmas. He didn't know who anybody was. Uh, he called my daughter by my name a couple of times. Um, it was almost as if he was living back in the past. And then he commented and he asked my mother where my grandmother was why my grandmother wasn't at dinner. I says, what, what do you mean, Grandma? He says, yeah, you know, Grandma, your mother. He said, where is she? Well, she'd been dead 16, 16 years. years. Just after Christmas, Cork was admitted to the University Hospital in Chicago. Doctors weren't sure what was wrong with him. They diagnosed multiple sclerosis, even though insomnia is not a symptom of MS. By now, his condition had deteriorated dramatically. How long have you been here? Hmm? Yeah. How much? Two weeks. Okay. Um, you're a, a music teacher, right? What do you teach? Instruments? Can you say it? What instrument? What instrument? Clarinet? He was no longer able to carry on a conversation. You got nods, and you got the occasional yes, and the occasional no, and that was it. Sometimes Cork appeared to be dozing, but EEG measurements of the electrical activity in his brain showed nothing that could be classified as sleep. By now, he'd gone without sleep for more than 130 days. When you wake up, do you feel refreshed like you should? You do. You feel good in the morning? Because your EEGs look like you're not sleeping very well. 
by the third day he was not a functioning individual so after six months no wonder he was in a total catatonic state he, you know he could not eat he could not speak he couldn't do anything after months of confusion doctors finally recognized that cork was suffering from a rare genetic disorder it was like a bomb went off he sat there and said well we know what's wrong with your brother he has something called fatal familial insomnia and there is no treatment and there is no cure and it is genetic so you need to be tested as soon as possible fatal familial insomnia had been discovered seven years earlier victims of the disease have inherited a mutation which eats away at a region of the brain called the thalamus. Damage to this area destroys the sleep onset mechanisms. It's as though the brain's sleep switch has been jammed in the awake position. When somebody told me that my brother was dying from, from an inability to sleep, my first thought, and I'm sure everybody's first thought is, so give him some drugs, give him something that's going to make him Hello? You know, we all know, you know, we, everybody knows that there's all kinds of barbiturates on the market that'll put you to sleep. In fact, even the most powerful drugs had little effect. Doctors in Italy had given one patient barbiturates in an attempt to help him sleep. The dose had been heavy enough to put the patient into a coma, but it failed to send him to sleep. After six months without sleep, Michael Cork was close to death. I remember that day like it was mm -hmm. yesterday. The phone rang, and I said, you know, can I help you? And she said, I I'm sorry to tell you this. And that's all I let her say. I said, no, can't be. And so when he died, I wasn't there. And I went in. The way I always used to. And he finally got to rest. And that was the good part of it. That he could finally sleep. Eternally. I said to people that my brother died because he didn't sleep for six months. And people look at me and say, you're nuts. Never heard of anything Never like heard that. of it. You don't die from lack of sleep. Yes, you do. Joanne Mosby was tested for the fatal insomnia gene. The tests proved negative. But when she was a child, her natural father left the family home and moved south. She knows it's possible that somewhere she has family for whom time is running out. There's got to be a genetic link to my father's side of the family, my natural father's side of the family. And we need to know to find out what that is. There are other children out there. I have half siblings out there somewhere and they need to be tested. Around 25 families worldwide have been diagnosed with fatal familial insomnia. There's no known cure, and all those who carry the gene will die. As we fall asleep, we enter a regular cycle, passing through deep sleep to dream sleep and back again. During dream sleep, the brain is more active than when we're awake. But in deep sleep, the mind lies dormant. It's during this deepest stage of sleep that the brain may switch to an altered and potentially dangerous state of consciousness.